Welcome everybody. We have a very special video for you today. This is JCH at JCII, Japan, Japanese Camera Industry Institute. And this is their camera museum. And we've been very, very lucky today to be allowed into the museum while it's closed to show, to show you exactly what's going on in this absolutely amazing place. So why don't we go and have a look? This is the entrance to the Japanese Camera Museum, JCII Museum. This is Ishio-san, who's been very kind to let us come in today and have a look around. And we've got the run of the place, which is absolutely amazing. So if you are coming to Tokyo, this is definitely one of the places you're going to have to visit. So why don't we go and have a look? First of all, there's so much to see. I want to show you everything. I can't. It's just overwhelming so what I'm going to do is show you the important points that I think are important first and then we'll come back to some others so if you see stuff don't worry we will get to it I mean there's all sorts of amazing things I want to talk about straight away but I'm going to show you something that's really important this this is the first camera in the world this is the Juro daguerreotype camera made in 1839 Amphons, Alphonse Giro and Co. in France. So this, this is a remarkable piece of camera history. And next to it, there is also the Bianchi daguerreotype from 1839. So, you know, these are, the, these are what started us. This is what started photography. But it's not the only cool thing in here because we've got these amazing cameras. But this museum wasn't just about cameras. It was initially founded to preserve Japanese cameras and Japanese camera production and the industry. Um, but they took a lot of stuff from other countries as well and it became part of the museum to preserve and collect cameras from all over the world. Um, and obviously, what everybody wants to see, Leica, the Leica O, number 110. Incredibly rare camera, it's just, it's here. It's here in a nondescript uh, neighborhood in Tokyo. Um, obviously they have their Leica collection to show people the history and significance of Leica, including a K7A, a Black 3G, um, you know, M4, M5, and look, there's a Lights M6, that looks, very familiar right now. I think they're quite popular at the moment. I wonder why. Not only is there the first camera ever, but there's also here, which is something very special, the first Japanese camera ever. This is the Cherry hand camera. Now, this one is a replica. I um, don't think there's really any truly first ones actually still around, but this is also uh, the, the 1904, the Cherry camera. So these are the first cameras to come out of Japan. The uh, Nif Karet, which is Look at that name, what a name, the Nifkarat from 1929. A pocketable folding camera. It looks very, very much like the Kodak. Very much like the Vest Pocket Automatic, but it's a Japanese camera. And of course, without saying, uh, the Hansa Canon, which was Canon's you know, first proper rangefinder camera. And that's obviously got a pride of place in the case as well. What's really cool is, and I wish I'd been able to find one, this one's got a manual with it and a kind of box as well. I'm not sure if that's original, but if it is, wow, wow. Yes, essential historical material for science and technology. So, you know, these are truly groundbreaking. They also have here the significant cameras from recent times, digital cameras, okay? And you've got the Epson RD1, which is incredibly popular. It's like this transition from film to digital. Mamiya ZD as well, which was again a transition to film and digital. Um, and so what happens is uh, the camera manufacturers will give, send uh, one of these cameras, any that they make, every time they make one, that it comes to this museum to go into the museum to be part of its collection. So yes, you've got all of these cool modern ones, but then you've got something really important. You've got like the original originator cameras from digital back in the day 1991 you know DCS systems from Kodak and Canon Nikon collaborations these these were the very first mainstream digital cameras and they're here they're important 
they change the way we take pictures. But around here, there's something that's really cool. Now this is the first Sony prototype digital camera from 1981. Look at that. It's, a, oh, it, it's amazing. 1981 and they still managed to make a digital camera it shows you how far they really came okay uh, if, if you can't tell already i am absolutely mind blown by this place i'm having the time of my life i've got it to myself it's uh, it's heaven now here you've got the 1980s and 99 to the 1990s to me the most important era for me this is what i like and these are really significant cameras from this time including a canon still video camera funny looking disc you've got disc cameras you've got the fuji rencia cardia with its what's it 16 lenses uh, you know um it's uh, you've got uh, contacts t2 nikon 35s you know, um oh yeah uh the, the samurai kyocera samurai which i had my uh portrait taken from a magazine with which was wild um and in here you've got the 1960s and 1980s. Now these are some very significant cameras because some of them, although they say, you know, Western names on them, they were worked on by Japanese companies, which is why they're in here. The Bell and Howe, you know, um, the Leica CL, which was done by Minolta, the Agfa, which was worked on with uh, um, Bronica, I believe it was, or uh, Chinon, yes, Chinon. You've got the Nimslo over at the back there. You've got what, the very first selfie camera with a selfie stick. And that's from back in 1983. Imagine that, taking a selfie, going off, getting it developed three weeks later, you know. Um, on the walls, the walls are adorned with historical references and notes of cameras and sales articles for cameras and catalogues for camera sales. Then we move on to the 1960s, and there's literally too much to talk about. There, is, there are so many rare pieces in here. I mean, there's the ones we all know, the Canon 7 with the Dream Lens, but there's also really unusual esoteric stuff, which a lot of people skip by, but it's here. Very first Nikonos, you know, um, Top Cons, which, oh, wow. Uh, a Lord Martian. I've never even heard of a Lord Martian before. That's actually a really cool name for a camera. And then 1950s as well, we have, I think, what everybody's seen before, uh, quite a lot. There's the Bronicas, the Nikons, uh, Fuji Pets. You, but you've also got uh, this Dorio camera, which is really important. Um, everybody's seen those, the Mamiya pistol camera. These were used by the police to catch speeding drivers. And You've got, again, in the 50s, the Petal, which is this tiny, tiny, tiny little camera, a mini sub-miniature camera, okay? Uh, Stecky, and Balti, all of these, the Snappy, these sub-miniature cameras, which became so popular at this time. In particular, of importance for me, I think, is this panel. This is the very first of the panel, and you see the wide luxes and things, but this was where panel began. 1952. This museum was founded, I believe, in 1954. Um, there is one thing I missed, and it's really important, and I think I really need to show it to know this too. I've just seen something else. <laughs> this is how good this museum is. This is how wild this museum is. That is my absolute goat holy grail. That is a Nikon Zen 10 camera, fisheye camera, which I've been looking for one of those for years. There's only one other I know of, and that's in the Nikon Museum. That's the closest I've ever come to one of those, and it is incredible. I'm blown away. But this, I need to show you this. This is important. This is the Machinet 6.7. This is the prototype, the originator of the Plowbell Machina that everybody knows and loves. This is how it started out. Look at that pop-up viewfinder. Isn't it incredible? This is the origins of the design for what became the Machina 6.7. A really, really amazing camera, really important part of history. Now, there's so much more to see. Uh, 
and getting overwhelmed. There's the Nikon rangefinder cabinet. This camera here is number 59, number 59 of the first batch of Nikon F's made, so that's number 59. And this was used by Senzo Yoshioka, um, a photographer. They've got they've got the uh, very first Nikon S3 2000 and very first Nikon SP <laughs> production. That's the serial number one. You know, um, they've <laughs> it's, uh, there's an S3M there. You know, um, but also over here. They've got the Seiki Kogaku, the one that I found recently. They've got the Seiki Kogaku, the Hansa Canon, the very early Hansas, which we talked about in a previous video, um, including all different versions, and you can see the differences in the top plates. And they've got the, uh, the post-war with the, the Canon lenses, but they've also got that. And that is an Hermes. It's a Nikon projection lens, and it is believed only about 13 of those exist in the world. That's amazing. Of course, we can't really come here without looking at all of this stuff. This is really cool. <laughs> Just the, the, the esoterica, the, the stuff that comes with it, you know. I love collecting these sort of things, and to see it as a collection like this is, is inspiring. Come over here, I want to show you this. Now over here, there's a collection of old film and I want this, I want it. I want this so much. Look at that, a giant disposable camera. Just, oh, I can't even, I can't even. I just, yeah, I can't even. They've also got, this is wild. You've got the, um, the insides of a Nikon F3, every single part stripped down to its bare elements. I want this as well. <laughs> I think I want this less because this is a gastro camera and it's probably been down someone's throat, so I think I'll pass on that one. <laughs> but, you know, a collection of the uh, old disposable cameras and EOS strip downs. I wonder who makes these for them. If not, they probably do them themselves, but they're absolutely incredible. In my extreme haste to get to the most amazing first camera ever, I completely skipped over this inconspicuous glass case, which just so happens to hold some of the most rare Leica cameras ever, including at the back there, an MP and an MP2. This is what this museum is really all about, that you keep on passing things and going, oh wait, and getting blown away and coming back and you keep on going round and round and finding more things. It's absolutely remarkable. I'm blown away by this place, I really am. I'm having so much fun, you have no idea. Another important part, this is my generation, this is the 1990s, 96 to 99, APS cameras, the Ricoh GR1. I mean, this is the one that kind of got me started on this, this path, selling cameras. These were one of the first cameras that I started selling. Um, this is the Fujifilm Big Job. So um, I wonder where the little job is. Hmm, a little jobby perhaps. And is that like a digital, yeah, that's a digital Konica Gemba Kantoku. That's the first one. Look at it, how different it is. Obviously the TX1. This was our generation, APS cameras, you know, and just as digital was starting to take over and become something, you know, but you still had film cameras being made. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it really brings back some memories. It's like a rush down memory lane for me. Um, and there's also, and again, you know, you kind of just go past it and then go uh, and slam on the brakes because look at that. A photo machine gun camera. Look at that. Isn't it incredible? And the schematics behind as well. Can you imagine carrying that thing around? Look at the size of it. It's absolutely mental. 
But this is what this museum is all about. Everything just captivates you and makes you come back, and makes you turn around and makes you have another look. And in my book, that makes it a really, really good museum. I skipped a really important part. I thought I should come back and show you. This is 1999 to 2003. This is effectively the end of what it was film cameras for then. And it was a transition to digital. The, you know, the original Instax there and a, a very huge old Minolta D image, Nikon D1, which changed everything for everybody. But you've still got some film cameras here. You've got the Voigtlander Bessa, the Konica Hex RRF, which was incredibly you know, important camera and the Bronica 645 RF. So you've got this mix here, which is fascinating because it's between the two. You've got digital and film still being produced at the same time. There is one thing I did skip over it in the last one. I wanna, wanna show you, cause I just noticed. I have one with me today. I've got my iBorg. There it is, right there, the Konica iBorg. Yep historically significant don't let anybody tell you otherwise don't leave home without it so over on this side of the museum this is a rotating collection so they have here cameras that are of private collections and they will change out every few months they will bring in a new collection and show currently they have a collection from this chap over here called Takashima Shizuo and Takashima Shizuo likes cameras very much but also really likes cars and watches and his collection is incredible. Jäger Lakucha compass camera, the, <laughs> the Krugner Delta Teddy, these are all these are incredibly, incredibly rare, and the condition of them is something else. But he also loved cars. He was a total car nerd, or is a car nerd. So he had collections of his cars and watches and toys and things that he liked. He, he has this absolutely enormous collection of really unique pieces, but what strikes me the most is the condition they're in. They are all absolutely perfect condition. There is, I, I don't understand how he has managed to keep them so well over all this time. That Icon University is almost a hundred years old and it looks like it's just come out of the factory. It's amazing. Stereo panoramic. Uh, a lot of these cameras, this is beyond my level. This is beyond my pay grade. Uh, I've, I've not seen them. There's the Palau Bell Machina 1, right? So that's the absolute beginning for Palau Bell. Now, if we come through, as you can see, he's got his graph flexes and the Soho flex and you know the big folding cameras and a, a huge collection of folding cameras as well. They've this one is extremely cool. This is the Concover Tessina watch camera. Isn't it beautiful? Absolutely incredible little thing. Have to have special film rolls for it, which you can still get. Um, and it, he's got a really uh, wide ranging collection. It's not just Japanese, it's European, it's, it's, it's everything. He's got everything in here, Tanax, and they're all absolutely beautiful. It, it's just mind blowing and this, collection changes frequently so um, you can come every I think it's every three months or so that they change it out now in here we have photography uh, instruments for uh, major use a collimator you know things like this for uh, enlargers and, and, and lens testing equipment and measuring equipment but you've also got cool stuff like the, the, the light meters and the flash bulbs and the old film developing equipment this this is one i think everybody's gonna like jajang the clear cameras and the cut off cameras look at those the cut in half nikons and pentax and the, the noblex and and but all of these plastic clear see-through cameras as well Oh yeah, that's fun. That's, I think a lot of people are going to be drooling in here. So this is interesting as well. 
if we come over to this collimator, collimator, uh, collimator, sorry, we have the original Japan Camera Inspection Institute stickers, and you've all seen these on your Japanese cameras, haven't you? You recognize those? Well, this is where they came from. And it was funny because Ishio-san said that the JCII looks like JCH, which I think is really cool. Thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, it does. I like that. This is also absolutely bonkers. Ken Matsuda decided to make something out of cameras. And he made this. It's a dinosaur robot thing, and it's been made with uh, Olympus XA2s, Pen E's, Fujifilm Cardias, Olympus Pens, Canon EOS, uh, Tamron lenses, Canon Auto Boys. Pulled the parts apart and put it all together. Incredible. We have a war photographer here who was very famous in Japan, this is Koichi Sawada, and these are his cameras. Um, which he used in, I believe, Vietnam War. He won a uh, Pulitzer Prize for journalism. Um, World Press uh, photo gold medal, gold medal, gold medal, gold medal. And he's got a Leica there. Yeah, I mean, this guy was, this guy was really famous. And before we uh, get away from ourselves, we have uh, the spy camera section. And this is rad because this is these are all of the hidden cameras that you could spy with back in the day. So where can you see them? Where can you guess them? And look, you've got necktie cameras and breastplate cameras and the gun camera, binoculars. The Steinberg ABC, that's so cool. But I think I'm going to say my favorite and one that I just, I, I, I was shocked to even see it is the Ben Akiba. I have never seen one of those before. That to me was amazing. This was, these were cameras recovered from after the 2011 earthquake in Fukushima. Um, and they were recovered from uh, the, the tsunami and they've been preserved here, which I think is really important and really nice. So this, there's also, you know, this camera museum here, this is the camera museum which I've shown you, but there isn't just the camera museum here. You see, uh, they also have a huge library and a salon as well with a gallery and exhibition. They also have goods, so you can come and buy yourself some spoons or a cloth. I actually quite like the cloth. I might have one of those. Okay, so that was the JCII camera museum. As you can see, it's absolutely amazing. You can spend hours in here. I heartily recommend that you do so. If you're coming to Tokyo, make sure you come and pay a visit. It's on the Hansom online. It's really easy to get to. It's only a few minutes walk from the station. To get in will cost you 300 yen, unless you're a school. If you've got kids, they're free. It's definitely worth a visit. You will probably end up, as I did, spending hours in here, completely losing your mind over all of the wonderful things that are in here. I want to say a very big thank you to Ishio-san for allowing us to come here on this day when nobody's here. It's been a real honor. And when you come to Tokyo, make sure you check it out. Please keep on liking, subscribing, check out the rest of the videos, and I will see you next time. Keep on shooting film.